Is this rasps, is it? I was born at a farm of West Crehy, Achnegat, on the 15th of March 1914. My father was tenant farmer of that farm, and a, both my parents actually belonged to the parish of Aberdower, both from farming stock in the parish of Aberdower. A, I went to school, which was two miles away, at Clock Khan, and went to that school until I was aged 11, and then I went on to the Maud Higher Grade School. I cycled three miles to Atnagat and took the train. It started in May 1926, but you will recollect that that was the time of the coal strike and the railway strike and the, the trains didn't run so I cycled the seven miles to Maud after that. And I wasn't, I wasn't a very, very interested in, in schooling. But I was always quite good at maths and my parents certainly didn't want me to come home to the farm because farming was very depressed at that time. However, I went to Gordon's College in Aberdeen for two years and while I was there I sat exam for the bank. To be told after I passed that there was a waiting list of 200 and there was very little chance of getting in. So for the six months or so that I was at school after I passed the exams, nothing was heard of from the bank. So I didn't want to carry on with schooling and came home and to work on a farm. I was told by my father that, that uh, if I was going to come home, I had to, I had to do a man's work, and uh, that, that never did me any harm. While I was at home working on the farm, I got a turn of, of most jobs. It took a while. I saw a man, and uh, then a second cattleman and then second horseman. In 1937, my father said to me that he wanted me, he, he, by that time he had taken Kabarti, and he wanted me to <clears throat> go down to Kabarti. I wasn't very keen because I had got involved with the junior farmers. I was secretary of the Deer Junior Farmers Club. I think I was instrumental and in, I was a founder member of the Deer Junior Farmers and thereafter I was secretary for four years and then for, I followed that by being the, the chairman. And I was interested in a few things that, that and I wasn't too keen in going, in going down to, the, the, to New Orleans. <coughs> However, ever, uh, eventually I said that I would go down if my father would make me tenant. And an arrangement was made that I would go down as tenant. I didn't have any money, so I had to borrow. The stock, the stock of the farm was valued, and I became the tenant. And uh, 
I didn't have money to pay for the stock, so I had to borrow a borrow from my father. He was good enough to give me a loan of money. And I thought, well, it'll take me ten years at any rate to, to pay off the stock. I mentioned earlier that I was quite keen in maths. It was my best subject. So the last year that I was at Gordon's College, I took bookkeeping as a subject. And I was quite bright at that. I think I was about top of the class at that. So I had been keeping my father's books. I continued to do this after I went down to Gabarty and I kept books for myself. The first year I had a very small profit, I think a hundred or two. The second year I actually had a loss. And as I mentioned before, things were very bad in the 1930s. However, by 1939, when there was war of, uh, of, of war breaking out, the Ministry of Food became the sole buyer for most of our products, and things improved. And I was able to pay back my father's loan quicker than I, th than I thought I would do. And then he said to me, well, now he says, I, I want you to buy the place. I was quite happy to be renting the place, but he told me that if I didn't come to terms with him and buy the place, that he would sell it as it was, uh, as it, uh, it was, as both the farms were mortgaged. There was the, 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 the uh, he, he wasn't getting much of it. Eventually, I bought the farm. And he, I think that although I wasn't happy at all at the time, it turned out to be a, a, a good proposition. During the war years, we were sometimes very short of, of workers on the farm, and there were times when I had only one or two men when, I, when actually we needed three or four at that time. So I had to work, work fairly hard and it was a, sometimes had to be a, a very long day. So it wasn't until the end of of hostilities and when things came back to normal, that I began taking an interest in other things. To begin with, I, became, I was a member of the local branch of Farmers Union and uh, I became the chairman. I think I had two, two terms of being chairman of the stricken branch of the Farmers Union. And Eventually, I became a member of the, the executive of the Farmers Union, the, North, the Aberdeen and Carn area, and became chairman. Uh, th that took me to the Council of the Farmers Union, and which met alternately in Edinburgh and Glasgow. And, uh, uh, from that, I, I really uh, became interested in, particularly in the marketing of the farm produce. I always maintained that the farmer's greatest weakness was in the marketing of his produce, and probably that is still true today. Meanwhile, on the farm, my main interests on the farm were traditional fattening of cattle and sheep and pigs, growing oats, barley and potatoes. I was spending, during my chairmanship of Buck and Meat, I was spending most of, of the working day on Buck and Meat. And I've been very lucky in my time having staff that carried on the work on the farm when I was busy engaged otherwise. 
And I may say, I would say here, that I never had any salary from Buchan Meat. I was voted my expense, I, I got expenses and was voted in the last few years an honorarium. Uh, but I, I was never, I was never actually in the pay of Buchan Meat. Back on the farm, I was lucky that I had lads that carried on the work. Certainly, I found that after I gave up being chairman of Buchan Meat, that the farming became more profitable because I could devote uh, more of my time to, to uh, uh, the farm. I had been asked if I would become a member of the Finance Committee of the Conservative Party locally, and this I agreed to do. Remember, I hadn't been put on the executive, but I became a member of the Finance Committee. The, by the time that the elections came round, uh, the, the annual election for, for uh, uh, a, a new executive, the vice chairman was moving up to be the, 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 pres, the president and the chap who was vice chairman, who would have been vice chairman, had been told that he would have to, because of health, he would have to give up outside work or he might have to get, he was a teacher or he might have to give up his job. So they asked me if I would consider, uh, he was vice chairman, asked me if I would consider standing as chairman. And I agreed to do this. So I became chairman. The first meeting that I attended of the executive of the Conservative Party, I had in the chair. And that meeting was a meeting at which we had appoint a new candidate. And Albert Macquarie was subsequently appointed. Now, um, I tried to help, being chairman, I tried to help the Conservatives. I wanted to see a, a strong organisation built up and we got branches set up in every village and district. And I think that helped a good deal when the election came round and when the Conservatives did get a candidate elected. By that time I had, been, I had done my stint as chairman. I have taken the view regarding local politics, the same view as I took in Buchan Meat and in the cooperatives that I had to do with on behalf of the farmers, that you're working for the people that elected you. You, you, are, you are working for them and I feel free and have been all my life, all my time feel free to say what I think, irrespective of any party involvement.